Tonight on The Blurb, the themes of the newest Jonas Brothers performances. And what Ed Sheeran and his wife decided to name baby number two. Making Kent feel, feel like, like Hollywood. Hollywood. This, this is, is The Blurb. blurb. everyone and welcome to a brand new edition of The Blurb. I'm Kelsey Drennan. And I'm Chris Abreu. We start off with some new Jonas Brothers performances. We do, Chris. So the Jonas Brothers know where happiness begins. For five consecutive nights, the Jonas Brothers performed a majority of their discography of music with each night focused on one of their albums. Night One featured not only their debut album, It's All About Time, but also corresponding 2000s fashion looks. The Broadway concerts were no easy undertaking, though. The trio, the trio thanked their band and crew for, quote, creating such a one-of-a-kind experience. Learning over 100 songs, building a different set each night, and playing five shows in a row is no easy task, end quote. But fans were left with peak excitement about the upcoming album, entitled The Album, that will be released May 12th. Very excited. Yeah, my inner child would give anything to be at that performance. Are you a Joe or an, you know, who are you? Like, <laughs> Joe, a, Nick, Nick, Kevin Nick fan? Kind of Joe fan. Thing. Yeah. We're beefing. <laughs> no, it's better, because then we can, you know. Oh, no, exactly. You're so right. But continuing with other musical artists, um, news on our minds is Hozier's recent release of a, the of his EP, Eat Your Young, a striking title that Hozier explained in a TikTok earlier this month. The artist explained Eat Your Young alluded to the third circle of hell and All Things End alludes to the sixth circle of hell. The song's focused on gluttony and heresy, and while Hozier has previously focused his music around themes of religion and mythology, his album aims for further reflection. Despite the song's doomful title, the lyrics are meant to comfort listeners that life is meant to be lived. The singer-songwriter released this collection of songs before his full album, Unreal Unearth, which is set to be released at the end of summer. Have you listened to Hozier a lot? All I can think of is take me to church. That Wait, one, I also it. think of like the work song, but uh, maybe I should the listen to- The work song? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to sing you on camera. You can fill me in later. I, I'll fill you in <laughs> later, but we need to listen to more of him. Uh, anyways, while some exes become friends after breakups, this celebrity couple, not so much. Bad Bunny's ex-girlfriend is now suing him for $40 million. She filed the lawsuit last month in Puerto Rican court, and the reason why? Well, it's apparently for using her voice and a phrase she came up with in two of his songs without her permission. She's claiming that Bad Bunny's songs Pati and Dos Mil 16 had her, quote, distinguishable voice. She's claiming that because that line was used in not only the songs, but used as records, promotions, worldwide concerts, television, radio, and social and musical platforms. Wow, that was a mouthful. Uh, she has been hounded by the public. Her lawsuit says that being caught in the public's eye has caused and currently causes her to feel worried, anguished, intimidated, overwhelmed, and anxious. I kind of like used to be a Bad Bunny, or yeah, Bad Bunny stan, so am I like canceled? Uh, <laughs> ooh. No comment. <laughs> no comment at all? No. Nothing? I'm sorry. I miss Latin music though, maybe we'll get back into it. But um, Guinness World Record names The Weeknd the world's most popular singer. The 33-year-old Canadian singer Success has seen him set two new world records, including most monthly listeners on Spotify of 111 million and the first artist to reach 100 million monthly listeners on Spotify. The Weeknd had almost 30 million more listeners than second place Miley Cyrus at 82 million. The Grammys have declined to make any comments, though. Huh. I, I'm, another thing, wow, we're just out of the loop. We're just not trendy today, Kelsey. We're just getting, we're getting caught. <laughs> yeah, we are getting caught. Kind well, of. anyway, um, Amazon Prime Swarm has been a viral sensation. The new comically edged psychological thriller series from Donald Glover and Janine Neighbors is based around the unhealthy fandom of Beyonce's biggest fan. The show stars a young woman, Dre, played by Dominique Fishback, who is obsessed with a multi-platinum recording artist and megastar. The show has created a buzzing discourse online with fans praising and condemning the show. With creatives like Malia Obama co-writing episodes, the show deserves a watch. It sounds interesting. I also love Donald Glover, not gonna lie. No, yeah. Most things he's in, I'm willing to watch anyway. I'm, I'm like also just with his try. music. Love yeah. him. Love Always him. great. But again, we have so many artists today. We just really need to get caught up. <laughs> 
Ed Sheeran announced the name of baby number two. This is nearly a year after him and his wife, Cherry Seaborn, welcomed their daughter into the world. So what you've all been waiting for, the 10-month-old baby's name, is Jupiter. All of this information came after Ed Sheeran had made the shocking announcement that his wife was diagnosed with a tumor that couldn't be worked on until she had given birth. He was also dealing with the loss of a friend in a copyright case involving his popular song, Shape of You. While everything worked out in the end, these situations did take a toll on his mental health. However, it seems that he is starting to get back on track as his new album, Subtract, is available for streaming on May 5th. I'm excited for him. He's really been through like a lot. No, I know, and I'm gonna be honest. Like I, like I forget sometimes. Like he has a kid, and yet he's having another one. Like he's so far along. Yeah, in life, it's though. it's crazy. You know, like mm. he's just living his life. He has I'm, a lot to be proud of. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> well, don't go anywhere because after the break, we get to Taylor Swift's Eras tour, and all of the Swifties on our cast will give the rundown on the set list. The Blur is back with a new era and just in time for Taylor Swift's new tour. That's right, she just kicked off her Eras tour and she's in her Eras era. I love to see it and we're going to ask people around campus what they think of Taylor Swift's new tour. I'm Rocco. And I'm Sydney. Let's get, Let's right get, right get into, into it. it. Alright, so I'm here with Sarah. Hi Sarah. And you're a Swifty. Yes. So what is your reaction to the Eras tour after the first two nights in Swift City? Um, I was glued to my phone. I have a playlist of like all the songs. I'm going to the Airs tour in May. Um, I can't believe it's like three hours. It's like, insane. I, it, I'm so excited. She's performing over three hours. I'm That's seeing her in Detroit. Crazy. And, I'm and also the costume changes. It's oh, insane. I know. And her like swimming. I don't know if you see right. her. Like when she jumps right. in the stage <laughs> yes. and starts swimming. Yeah, right. she's amazing. It's crazy. She's crazy. She like doesn't take breaks. It's crazy. But that's why I love her, I think, because yeah. she's like the best kind of crazy. Yeah, and when she like dove into the stage, my mouth for that one, I was know. open for like 10 minutes. I was very excited. I loved all of her outfit changes. I thought it was very cool. I did think it was interesting that she only did one song from Speak Now, though. Right, absolutely. Yeah, no, yeah I was expecting a lot more. What do you think Speak Now is coming out? I mean, she only played one song for the concert, Which so. It's like really weird, though, compared right. to everything else. Right. right, like she had a couple of songs from each of them, so it's like. I, I'm getting a vibe that we're getting Speak Now sooner than people would think. So, oh, are you a Swifty? Um, I used to be when I was younger. I haven't listened to her in years, though. That's okay. So. But are you, have you been following along with the Eras tour at all? A little bit. I see it all over social media right okay. now. My initial reaction was, my mind was blown that she's doing 44 songs, like, per show. I don't know how she does that. And then, like, all the effort they put into like just the concert in general, the choreography, the costume changes is just like a huge step in the music industry and it's gonna like set the new bar like really high oh, for, for sure. sure. I didn't know exactly when it was happening, but on Friday night, my friends are like, it's happening tonight, it's happening tonight. I was like, what's happening tonight? They're like, the air stories, it's gonna happen. Right. Oh yeah, super excited, super happy with the set list. Um, really looking forward to it. Absolutely, any songs you wanna hear on the tour? Or? Uh, um, anything from Midnight's, looking forward to Karma, right. Midnight Rain, yeah. Speak Now, obviously, it's just a great song. I'm blanking on the song name. Um, no, standing alone in a crowded room. What is that? I'm excited to see what acoustic song she'll right. do, because she's changing it all the time. Right, absolutely. So, I'm excited for that, yeah. but literally all of them, I'm so excited for. <sighs> Definitely anything from, like, folklore. Stop by you. Oh, right? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I've been a Swifty ever since I was like a child, like always have loved her. I always loved seeing her like evolve through her music and everything. And I was really lucky. I didn't get tickets the first round through, but I yeah. ended up getting them a couple weeks ago. My mom surprised me and my sister. That's so so just being able to see that and knowing that I'm going to be able to like see her in person, just how much of a good artist she is. Like, I'm just, I'm so excited. Right? I love Reputation. So yeah. all of those songs I was so excited for. Really reputation. Big fan of her Reputation album. Reputation, absolutely. Do you think her new uh, Taylor's version of Reputation is coming out anytime soon? Or? Uh, probably not. I don't know when the next one's coming out. I think right. it's 1984. Okay. I think, okay. I think that's the next one coming out, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. Right, I mean, we don't really know yet, so we're just kind of... We don't. Right? Story of Us. Yeah, story of Us. Was, yes. Like, it is Story of... The song is Story of Us. I'm my card right now. I'm like, I'm <laughs> I heard a lot of people were going to see it. I'm not the biggest Taylor Swift fan, so I didn't want to take the tickets away from right. someone who was. Absolutely. So I love Taylor Swift, but like, I'm not going to take away that chance for someone, because I see right. like everyone's like making their own outfits for that, like me. 
I, I, I just can't do that. Right. I am okay. going in Pittsburgh. I'm going to Pennsylvania, that That's concert. That's so exciting, yep. right? Going to the Pittsburgh show. Yes. I'm going to Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Yeah, the second night. Yeah, I'm going to the one in Pittsburgh, June oh, 17th. I'm going to Detroit to That's see so her. That's so exciting. Are you yeah. dressing up as an era, or? I think I have to do Reputation. Absolutely. It's my favorite. It's a good so. choice. Like, their boot, they're going to get, like, cowboy boots, and they're going to, like, color it from the different eras up oh, and everything so cool. and I'm like that's cool. My sister are trying to coordinate our outfits. I think we're either going to go with folklore or like speak now era. Probably reputation but I really like midnights. I'm probably going to dress up as reputation. Okay I love this yeah. plan and any like specific I don't outfit know. ideas yet? I don't know yet. I think just like blue and shimmery if I do midnights and then just like all black if I do so reputation. Fun. I love this yeah. so much. I think the verdict is we're waiting for reputation, waiting for speak now and we can't wait for this Taylor Swift concert. People are very excited about the Eras tour, but so are we. I just can't wait to talk about this with you guys. We've <laughs> <laughs> already been scheming. We're gonna give some spoilers against some yeah. of our castmates. Spoiler yeah. warning. Oh. Yes. We, we're all Swifties. We've all seen the post. The yeah. yeah. I wanted to escape it. Week. I wanted to hide, <laughs> but by the concert I'm going to is not till the end of June. Yeah, mine's not until July. Yeah, yeah, so there's no way I'm not gonna know just about everything. Yeah. Zero chance. <laughs> right. Like, how could it not? I mean, but I'm still going to enjoy every single second. I'm going to cry. The sheer length of this concert. Yeah. 44 oh songs. Oh two, no, Three hours. Two hours for the opener. Three hours for the, the like Taylor. whole concert itself. Hayden gave me that information, so he's yelling at me right now, saying like I stole it or whatever. It's like over but three <laughs> hours of just Taylor singing. There's like 15 costume changes. Mm -hmm. It's and it's, it's her singing. Like this woman is actively dancing, yeah. singing, and doing looks out there the whole time. I'm scared it's of her. crazy. <laughs> Honestly, I'm I don't scared know. of her. She has to be on something. I'm, I'm like cry. Yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm nervous. Wait, I have an interesting question though. So yes. I'm sure you all know that she's doing like a different acoustic yes. mm -hmm. version of one of her songs for each one, like different, different one for mm -hmm. each concert. Yeah. What song do you want her to do for that? Oh. The one we talked about earlier that I can't remember. Death by a Death by a Thousand Cuts. Yes. That's what That's I want. Uh, yeah. I would give I just, anything. I think that is <gasps> such a beautiful one. <laughs> I know which song I want. I was like, are you hitting your mic? <laughs> I want, no, 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 we're boomed. Um, I oh, want okay. to hear an acoustic version of the way, That's the Way I Loved You. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. The Way I Loved wow. You. I think I, would, I think I would lose my mind. I, it's, on, it's on Fearless Taylor's version. But. Yeah, we don't talk about anything that isn't Taylor's version. Yeah, right. right. It's Taylor's version or no version. Yeah, I just had that epiphany. It's unethical. It's it's unethical. unethical. It really it is. I, I'm just, I'm a crier, Yeah. Right. so I'm just <laughs> gonna the cry, sad ones, like, I she's sure. gonna be like, welcome to the Eras tour, I'm gonna be like, oh my god, I'm so <laughs> glad I'm here, like, I'm just, I'm such a crier, I'm just gonna be so happy. Right. I also feel like it was such an emotional process even getting the tickets. No, yes. it was a fight. It was a struggle. Yeah, because yeah. it wasn't like a oh, I want to go and I'm gonna be able to go. Mm -hmm. We did not know no. if we were going to be able to yeah. go. I had to have a, I, I had a friend buy me the tickets because they got yeah. the code on like their iPad. Yeah. On the wow. computer. And I was like, hey, girl. No. My mom was in line for hours and then they yeah. knocked her out and then she did it the next day and got Kansas City tickets because those were the only in the legit eight like eight of us total. Like went in like three or four of us got pre-sale codes. Mm -hmm. The four of us had to go in and try to buy. We were just buying as many tickets as we could. Yeah. But we all, only ended up with eight, which is exactly what we needed. Mm -hmm. There you go. But like, I be, was like yeah. we're wow. leaving it on the battlefield. <laughs> and I like cried when my mom got kicked out the first time, and I thought we weren't going to be able to go because it was like the Capital One thing was the only yeah. reason why we were able to go. Right. And I was just crying. Like she texted me, and I was like. You tried it so hard. Yeah, and like my mom's like, I didn't get the code, sweetie. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? You're lying. <laughs> Liar! It was, it was devastating. Oh my gosh, but... not the... I didn't even see that one. <laughs> that just... is just another piece of it. Like we said, that there's two hours of just the openers, which I love that Taylor's highlighting so many different openers. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, that's awesome. I'm sorry, no offense. I got the best openers ever. You did. You get Abr Gracie, I have Gracie Abrams, Abrams and Phoebe. Phoebe. No Ooh. way. I have Gracie and Girl in Red. <gasps> so that's, oh. that's pretty good too. Okay. okay. <coughs> I have Gracie. I have Gracie and Muna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard much about them, but I'm right. really excited. To I love them. Muna. Yes. Um, yeah. 
One thing that I kind of wanted to talk about was the, I know you are purposely not looking at the set list, so I won't like reveal what's on it too Thank much. You. But the order of the set list is not chronological. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like what I kind of love expected. that. It's like a little surprise. Right. Yeah. She Which I kind of like, but there's some hard cuts, you know? Right. There's so, some, like, we're in reputation right now, but then suddenly I'm in folklore. Yeah. Like, it's right. like, yeah. whoa. What's, like, one song that you guys need to hear live? Ooh. Ooh. I was, affairs for sure. Yeah, that's a good one. Cool summer. Oh, say, don't blame me. Oh, say paper oh, rings. Don't blame me. Paper. I, I love paper yes. rings. I, I know people it. think it's cheesy. It's cute. I like. Bob. Yeah, but here's mm. one thing we need to remember mm. about Taylor Swift. She's a millennial. She's a capitalist. She's such a millennial. We're gonna get <laughs> cheesy content. She's yeah. a millennial. She's a capitalist. Like, uh, like. And it's okay. We all know. It's working. And it's true. <laughs> but whatever she does, I eat up. Yeah. No, my my like must hear is did something bad. You're on your own, kid, and Cruel Summer. Oh, she mm. had a list. Right? I like. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Ah, oh. I need those. Like, I will cry if she's. You're play on those. your own, kid. Is my favorite. Uh, what if yeah. could have shove? What if? Oh. That's what I said. Is she playing three AM tracks? Like, I don't know. She needs I to because it. It. the three AM tracks are they the best part yeah. of Midnight. Yeah. 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 Really, they they're better than the actual album. This woman was like, I just released a whole album. Let me release my EP. Yeah. Yeah. Let me release three AM. Seven more. <laughs> We're like, yeah, she's. But why does Taylor always make it such a fun experience? Like the no, rep era. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. So much fun. This woman is a CD. capitalist. She's yeah, a marketer. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. She knows what she's doing. Like, she does. When people were predicting if she's going to release Speak Now, Taylor's version. And or we're still predicting <laughs> what's <laughs> coming yeah. next. Now, I every time she be. has, like, she's guessing, like, an announcement, we're like, it's going to be Speak Now, never. Really. And she's like, I, no. I don't think it's, I think she purposely, like, is keeping it until we don't predict it anymore. Mm -hmm. Probably. Because I think she, like, doesn't want to give it to us. Like, oh, uh, they, they can't know what's coming. Right. Like, she's going to keep releasing random stuff until, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, that's an Easter egg, that's an Easter egg. And she's like, guys, shut up. Like, that it was, like, was shut purple up. on her earring. Like I literally okay, just posted a the photo. The most valid one I've seen so far is on her red t-shirts. You know, she's had two different like phrases. The first one was a lot going on at the moment, and then the last one was who's Taylor Swift anyway, you or yeah. whatever. The bold like red text, like this is hard to without the visuals, but like could potentially spell out speak now. Like they're saying, oh, goodness. all of those okay, letters, yes, are saying oh, that's what I'm on the Swift, Swifty well, detective okay. talk. Do we here's give her too thing. much credit? Here's, we do, because she here's the thing. I literally, I'm such a Swifty that I get mad at her. Like, mm -hmm. Chloe knows this especially <laughs> well. Like, I... Like, sometimes I see your Instagram posts, especially the recent ones that just like, in my era's era. And I look at it and I say, someone get this girl off her damn iPhone. <laughs> right now. So I'm gonna take away her Those iPhone. pictures, though, of her practicing tour were like the most beautiful, oh, they were amazing. Right. They were I've beautiful. ever seen. Mm -hmm. Oh, she! Can we talk about how she's peaking right now? She's the looks the most beautiful that she's she ever. Is. She looks so, so in my opinion. Because she's like actually kind of happy. Yeah, and she's what like a multi-millionaire. Like yeah. that, that probably she helps. has so much money. Maybe she has so much money. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not as much depression as she used to. Right. So like things change. This is so true. Let's <laughs> right. move love. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Um, I want to hear Mirable. <gasps> yeah, Mirable is uh, an underrated one. That would make me tear up a little bit. That would be my acoustic pick. Yeah. 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 That's a good But thing. I don't know if she's gonna play it. I just love that song. I think she played yeah. it as her acoustic one. Oh. Also, I feel like we have to just mention yeah. the outfits that the fans are wearing. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. I still have to plan my era's fit because it's I'm becoming like a competition. Yet. It <laughs> is. Like, it also, is very impressive. Like I'm unsure about like is there like a backstage thing happening like she does? I don't to do? Not in Glendale though. They didn't do. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't degree. see anything about yeah. that. Because you know people would be so mad. Yeah, like for some right. reason they'd find something to be mm -hmm. upset yeah. about. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to keep hearing about the Eras Tour with you guys. So we're going to keep t t talking about Miss Americana. But when we get back, we're talking about you. Season 4, Part 2. Hello, you. Yes, you. Long time no see. We're here to take a stab at the second part of the new season of you. I'm so excited. Now, I want to get your initial thoughts on the season and how we feel about it. Um, okay, me first. I loved it all. I start? thought it was genuinely 
good from beginning to end. I think it was the best season. The beginning, like you're talking the whole season? Yes. Okay. Are you done? Yeah. Because my hot take is I was pretty bored in the first half. Really? I was huh. like intrigued still, like because I'm like I've been waiting for season four, but I was like this is too predictable. I knew like knew it was Reese by the fourth, like the fifth episode. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was like this was too predictable, and it wasn't the like yeah. twist that I wanted. But obviously, right? Second part makes up second for it. two. Second part, yeah, yeah. I I see. I liked the first part because it had the twist. And I think the second part added on with even like a further twist of the knife into into it, <laughs> and it's like I I enjoyed it more than season three. I think. Okay. Yeah. I, it might also just be like the setting and the atmosphere of it taking place in a different country, but yeah, I enjoyed it. What about you? Honestly, I can see why you didn't enjoy the first half of it. I thought it was a little slower, but honestly, overall, I have to say, like, I do feel like you is one of those rare shows that, like, it actually gets better each season. Yes. And I really do appreciate, like, all of, like, his crimes um, from the past two seasons have, like, kind of come to a Kind of come, yeah. Yeah, because, like, he's been forced to move to a whole other country. My mother actually texted me about you the <laughs> other day. Um, but no, I thought it was really good. Wait, we need to know what your mother said. Yeah. I can't say that on oh, TV. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. Listen, but she really I'll enjoyed say, it. I'll say what my mom said, because my mom also loved it, but she was so upset with the ending. Because here's the problem. With the show, they kind of make you like Joe. Like, no. Yeah. They kind of make you root they for him. And do. you're like, yes, come on, you got this, Joe. And then when like he actually isn't a good person, it just like breaks your heart I and you're like, well, real denial, great. I think when it happened, because I was like, yeah. no, he was doing so good. He like got her home and saved Miriam. Oh, right. I liked, I, but I think <laughs> so that's what's sad. good about the second part is that it kind of brings you back to the fact that, oh, he's not just a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. He's, no, exactly. he's kind of crazy. I kind think, of. <laughs> I think it's like, it kind of works for me personally, like in the story, like just purely within the context of the story that it kind of makes you root for Joe because mm -hmm. his actions are obviously not excusable. But at least like going back to like a little bit like season one, two, yeah. and even three, like you see some of his backstory. So I always appreciate when they tell you why a character You kind is. of sympathize with him, yeah. You do. My issue is I think it's a problem with like some of the things you see like in the real world where people like kind of thirst right. over him and you're like, like he's people, still a serial killer. Literally people making like thirst traps of him. Joe can like, stalk me any day, like no. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh -uh. I hate when I see people do that. I'm like, Girl, no, you wouldn't. No, that's <laughs> why I love Pin Badgerly so much. Like, I love Pin He Badgerly. literally, like, he'll respond to people's thirst tweets and be like, no. I'm literally <laughs> playing a serial killer. Yeah, like, no, he's that's the, the thing. Player. Like, he's, it's just so funny that, like, everyone in the show is like, he's literally a killer. Oh, like, yeah. Right. But you're rooting for him. You want him to <laughs> succeed in life. Like, what's your problem? See, but he's Here just go. so good looking. But he's it's so like, lovable. Yes. he's so lovable that, like, you're just like, I immediately I like you, went Joe. to Twitter <laughs> after I finished this season. Yeah. I was like, I need to hear what people are saying about this. And what's so funny is if you look back to his Instagram or TikTok, it shows him ironically doing the Taylor Swift anti-hero yeah. video where he said, I'm the problem, it's me. Like he yeah. gave away the whole season. Right. Like, not that he normally isn't, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it no, was so exactly. Funny. I feel like Chris definitely appreciated that. But I have to say, like, I think just for Joe throughout the whole series, like, what really works about him for me in particular, and, like, I feel bad saying I like him, because he, he does do awful he's things. He's just a compo like, complex character. He right. is, and he's a unique character because um, he's not overly physically imposing. He's very smart. Um, very, he's a big bookworm, and, like, you just look at him and, like, as bad as it sounds, you don't expect him to be a serial killer. Right. Like, no, he's he not has... this big, imposing person. He's very resourceful and cerebral. He has the charm about him. Right. Well, and I also will say, I think also with this season, you tended to like him more because of the other people in the show. Oh my the God. rich right. people in this show were on a different level. Not all of them, yeah. the but there were some. Like Phoebe, I loved Phoebe. Right. Kate was like so-so. I didn't love her, but I didn't hate her. But some of the other people, I literally was like, I would not be upset if <laughs> Joe and Nathan. you describe like it was bad <laughs> what you think of like the endings that they kind of gave you i was i was i was happy with phoebe's ending honestly oh i felt like it was so just cute. so yeah. nice that like she kind of went off on her own she didn't need whoever his name was mm -hmm. adam like yeah. it was just nice to see her kind of get a good Some ending by her colors. own and then For also sure. kate i was very pissed off with what happened to kate because right. she's like basically just doing his wrongdoings you can tell that that's she's... what she's gonna be doing. Yeah. 
and right, she, they right, have the, right. they have the money to pay it off. I do want to mention another star that came back to the season, the cage. So. Oh my god, the cage. <laughs> we didn't think it was going to be here, and then... They found a way. The cage. Oh, uh, how do they even make it there? Like, what? Is he just, like, boarding that on a plane, and they're like, well, what do you need that for? Is he buying the exact and same cage? Exactly. No. Logistically... <laughs> He's resourceful. That's why yeah. I love him. <laughs> there are so many people now. He has a trail. You know, of people yeah. who do know who he is, especially now that he's going back to his real name and in America. Yeah. And I guess the whole money, power, you can do anything. However, you would think that the system would somehow right. do bring justice. I just really hope, I well, one, I hope they get a fifth season. Yes. I think they yeah. deserve it. Mm. But I also feel like I just want to see what happens next. Right. Like, what's going to happen now it. with him and Kate? Absolutely. Do you think Joe is one of those characters that like it's just not gonna end? Like he's someone who just has to die. Like he's got so much baggage. Like I just, uh, I would, ho I would hope that it doesn't end well for him. But like, you just know that that's not always what happens. Right. No, that's true. Right. And it's, um, I think what would really bring this whole show story together would be animation. Stay tuned because our next segment will have you bouncing off the walls with the closest the blurb has gotten to animation right after the break. Howdy friends, and welcome again to everyone's favorite segment, Toon Talk! Yay! Woo, woo. Well, welcome to Toon Talk. This is definitely a real and relevant and reoccurring segment, and definitely not just an excuse for me to talk about the hit 1988 film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Definitely not. No, definitely not. Totally definitely not, not, definitely not. Um, so, friends, Hybrid animation. Thoughts? We don't do it enough. Yeah, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a really different kind of like movie making and it's really fun whenever it is done. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, agree. Um, I, agree I realize I haven't said what hybrid animation is for the audience at home. If you don't know, it's combining animation with live action film. Um, I think the coolest version of this is 2D animation um, but that's just me. So um, like, Ro like Roger Rabbit. So like Roger Rabbit, exactly, exactly. Um, but there's some key things that you need to be aware of if you're making um, a film that is hybrid animation. One of those being sight lines. Because, um, you know, if what, you... What are sight lines? Sight lines are where your actor is looking. Um, so if your actor is looking, say if I'm looking at you, Okay. I'm looking at you, and you can see that. Yeah. However, if I'm looking over here, then obviously I'm not talking to you. Um, and so even two to three frames of animation, like of misplaced sight lines, can shatter the entire illusion, because mm. obviously the cast is not actually talking to a real cartoon rabbit. Really? Um, <laughs> surprise, I'm sorry. Oh. Um, so to combat that, Who Framed Roger Rabbit filmed each scene twice. Oh, um, wow. mm. One with a stand-in dummy, and one without the stand-in dummy. Um, the dummy was to give them sight lines. And then the director would watch those two scenes simultaneously to make sure that the sight lines were correct. Uh, here's a beautiful example uh, on the screen behind um, oh, cool. the, the couch the wow. of Christopher Lloyd Love performing with a dummy. Um, I feel like that would be really hard to act with. Oh, definitely. Yeah, like because you can't really you know, read your scene partner's emotions. They did have um, the voice of Roger Rabbit was on set for most mm. of the scenes, dressed in a Roger Rabbit costume. <laughs> um, That's and it's so beautiful. That's so funny. <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but uh, other things that are issues, obviously, is if characters are interacting with real objects, mm -hmm. the real objects aren't actually being interacted with. There's nothing there. It's drawn on in post. Um, so they have to create um, s like mechanisms. They had a lot of like little arms, uh, mechanical robot arms that they would use for like Roger Rabbit takes a shot, and so they have an arm to do that. Um, when did he take a shot? Uh, after he finds out that his wife was playing patty cake with another man. Oh, spoiler alert! No. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, but they had absolutely all kinds of different ways. They had uh, wires. Um, to do the invisible man trick, so there's things just floating around. Mm. They had the sets built really tall, like six feet tall, so the puppeteers could be underneath <laughs> moving things. Um, 
So a lot, you gotta do a lot to yeah. make yeah. Um, hybrid animation work. Right. Obviously, I've been talking a lot about Who Framed Roger Rabbit, um, <laughs> which was the first time cartoon characters from competing studios were in the same film together. And Amory, I know this is your favorite Who Framed Roger Rabbit yes. fact. Why don't you fill us in? So like, um, uh, to get Disney to agree to uh, being a, showing a Mickey Mouse and to get Warner Brothers to show uh, Bugs Bunny in the movie, they had to make the screen time for both of them completely equal down to the second. Like otherwise, Whoa. otherwise the studios would not agree to it. Like, uh, so every time Mickey's on screen, so is Bugs. That's insane. Oh. And, the, and I would have never known that. The same goes for uh, Daffy and Donald Duck because exactly. Warner Bros. would not um, allow their big IPs yeah. in the Disney movie otherwise. Um, a fun fact about Who Framed Roger Rabbit as well, Judge Doom never blinks anytime he's on camera, which is intentional to make him that much more unsettling, which worked. I got nightmares from this film as a child. Oh, the dip. Uh, it's, uh, mm -mm. it's scary. Hey, for, for child scary. Jenica, it was scary. <laughs> um, I think for child anyone is scary. It's, it's scary. Yeah. It was scary. Uh, but it did win Oscars in visual effects, film editing, sound editing, and a special achievements award, um, which all I think were very well deserved. Icons. Absolutely. I, I loved it because Who Framed Roger Rabbit was so different than what I was watching as a kid. And like when I was younger, seeing this, it was like mesmerizing. And on top of that, also, um, I remember I just have a vivid memory of it being like really late at night and just, I was watching Space Jams on my TV, mm. which was such like a prominent part of my childhood. So it's just, it's cool to see like us talking about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know if this counts, but in the SpongeBob movie, when David Hasselhoff mm -hmm. is holding SpongeBob, would, would that count? Oh, yeah, yeah. Any, it, hybrid animation is just any that has live that, action and. Okay, so I loved like when he, when he like put the crown and like launched it like in that movie. Like, <laughs> I can't imagine how weird it was to film that. Like, being... They have to CG his pecs just <laughs> opening. <laughs> and yeah, then... like what? <laughs> Who came up with that? I don't know. I've never seen the Spongebob movie. You've not uh, seen I'm not, Really? I, I didn't watch Spongebob as a That's kid. Did we just sell you um, on it? I'm so confused right now. <laughs> it's okay. Just, Im just imagine. I watched it. Just imagine Days David Hasselhoff just shirtless and his his pecs are going. <laughs> yeah, like like a robot. And then Can't he put, you see it? And then, <laughs> he, then he like puts a crown like in between them and like it closes together it's, and it launches. It's so funny. Absolutely it's insane. So ten out of ten. That's the but. That movie is the best SpongeBob movie. Any of the other ones after that, garbage. Good take. Yeah. I agree. Interesting. I agree. Um, but for you guys, your favorite hybrid animation films, what, what is it? What is it that makes it so mm. special? Hmm. What makes it special? I think yeah. because it's so different. Like yeah. I, you, you, you put cartoons in this part and adults and like p actors in this part. And then you, oh, Cartoons adults. and adults, the two, <laughs> like, <laughs> the only two demographics. No children allowed. No children, no. no. They don't exist. No dogs allowed. And then all of a sudden to take them and just mesh them together. I remember even like, I think the Oscars had a little segment where uh, Donkey and Shrek were in the audience for it. And it's like, Whoa. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's really weird to see. But I think that's just why it's so cool is that because yeah. it's, you, you, don't wouldn't, you wouldn't think it. about it. Exactly. It'd be really cool to see maybe like a, a hybrid animation Shrek movie. I don't know how that would. I don't know how that would work, Ooh. but I don't know if I want that. <laughs> I'm scared thinking about it. I think the internet would be too happy about that. I mean, we are Lord going Lord back. Farquaad is actually just a human being. <laughs> Ew. He's a five eleven king. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> you look terrified. I think about it. <laughs> Live action hi hybrid animation. Shrek, no, would no. be would be objectively terrifying. <laughs> it would be terrifying, but I want to see the uh, what, oh my god, I forgot what the big gingerbread man's name is. Gingy, Gingy. is it Gingy? I want to yeah. see live action Gingy. <laughs> that would be really fun. <laughs> Please, that, would be, no. that would be very good. <laughs> but just Space Jam is a, a really good like right. example of it. <laughs>
That was a very good segue. <laughs> <laughs> Try, trying. It's okay. Speaking trying of, so, <laughs> trying so hard to like get off of the horrors of Shrek. And I like the space still doing it with the, the Chippendale movie. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is another thing. I know. You, I know your opinions were that you think that it wasn't as good as the original, which is fair. Uh, I just think that uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is the best of hybrid animation, and that's that's what I think. Mic drop. And that's <laughs> how we're ending this segment. Tune Stay top. tuned to see the cast dip their toes into the wild world oh. of celebrity liquor. Boom, boom, boom. A lot of celebrities find success through side hustles in clothing lines or books, but some have found side hustles in the liquor industry. Mm -hmm. The question is, can, thank you, Chris. Can our cast guess which celebrity made that liquor? Are you ready, Cass? I'm cast? sure I can. Sure. All right. We'll try. So, how we're going to play uh. the name for liquor, and then I can either give you three options, or if you can just instantly guess, instantly guess. Sounds good. So our first one is Wait, wait, wait. A Should we wait till you finish reading the options? Yes. Yes. OK. OK. So I'll give you the three options. OK. The first option is 818 Tequila. Is oh. this made by, oh. Wait, no, 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 go ahead. No, 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 I'm just trying to think. Is it Kylie Jenner, Kendall Jenner, or Caitlyn Jenner? I think I'm. We said you have to wait to raise your hands or finish reading the options. I know. You raised your hands. No, no, Kelsey was about to say it out No, wow. I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> I know what it is. Ew, that bottle's ugly. The, the officials over here are saying Chloe was first. Kendall. Because she correct. raised yeah. her hand while you were giving the options. Yeah. But well, I didn't have to think about the answer. You know I knew what? I Life the moves on. So, well, speaking of which, that let's move on to our next option. Hand. That <laughs> bottle is <laughs> ugly. That's the only thing I have to say. That's beating right cute. now, Kelsey. <laughs> All right. Literally. So, our next option is so Virginia crazy. Black American Whiskey. Okay. Was this made by Drake, Jack Harlow, or Jay Z? Oh. Bailey. And that was clearly Bailey. Jay Z. That is incorrect. Dang Who's it. gonna steal, Chris? Jack Harlow. That is incorrect. <laughs> I was about to say it's the first one. I don't remember his Drake. name. Whatever you it say, Drake. It was Drake. I think that's kind of like a little bit of a toss-up. Call me a mess. No, nobody okay. got it. My first guess was Blake Shelton. Oh, what? I was. <laughs> okay. It is kind of funny because it's country. American whiskey, but Drake is Canadian, so it's it a little bit of a toss-up okay. there. It's All right. Drake, what are you hiding? Well, let's see if you can get the ne the next one. Okay, so the next one is Mason number nine. Is it Machine Gun Kelly, Post Malone, or Jack Harlow again? Uh, Post Malone. That is correct. I Good job. Like, this bottle's like actually it. very pretty. It is no, this one, this no, one I love the bottle. It's giving Post Malone. Is it, yeah. like, is it, a, is it a rose? He would not make such a pretty is. bottle. I, no, it wouldn't. has a rose on the bottle, so he, I guess it's, is it that, that is it a rose? <laughs> I love it. I'm One time that. someone told me that my brother looked like Post Malone, and I was like, is that a compliment? Or what's going on? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I think Post he's Malone attractive. Like he doesn't shower. shower. Oh, oh yeah. I like that. I get that. <laughs> um, I get that. Did you just say I like that? Yeah. No. Get oh, out of here. Oh, I thought you were talking about I me. I was like, no, I did it. Okay, well, our next one is Selva Ray Rum. Is it Selena Gomez, Pitbull, or Bruno Mars? Oh. Bailey. Bruno Mars. That's correct. Yes! This That's I love so that man. Bruno. I love that man. I've, I've seen this before. I was trying to like trick y'all to see if, because it's like Selva Ray. I was like, maybe they'll guess Selena Gomez. Selena. I don't know. Selena's not. I would know. That doesn't give Selena. Hey, you never I know. I love Bruno Mars. I just want everyone to know that. All right, well, this <laughs> one. <laughs> this one's an interesting one. This one is Born and Bred Potato Vodka. Is it Channing Tatum, Joe Maganello, or Matthew McConaughey? Wait. Kelsey? Yeah, oh, you always say the names and I always forget the first name. Who was the first person hit? Uh, Joe. Joe. Channing Tatum, Joe Maganello. Channing Tatum, that makes sense for Channing Tatum. <laughs> I thought it was Joe. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, that makes sense for him. Wow. I swear one of my friend's parents no, have this. That bottle looks so familiar. Born and bred yeah. potato sounds like something you shouldn't say. That Born and bred potato sounds All right, sounds so like currently, Kelsey's only with like two, but Chloe and Bailey have one. Chris, you got zero. So let's see if Chris can get one. All right, the next one is Aviation Gin. Was this made by Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., or Ryan Reynolds? I think I saw Bailey's I first. Bailey. Oh. Chris Evans. No, 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 I know it. Oh. Okay. Ryan Reynolds. That's correct. Wait, oh wait, I thought I knew that one. I don't like I was actually waiting for Ryan Reynolds because I thought I knew it. All right, so clearly we know who won. 
It was Kelsey. Kelsey won. That's who won. Yeah, Kelsey won. Good job, okay, Kelsey. Kelsey. I got the blue one, though, so I'm satisfied with that. If you get the chance, <laughs> try them, but drink responsibly. Yeah, literally. We always, I'm you know, gotta say, drink responsibly. Okay, bye. Wrap that up. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye. Well, Thanks that's all we have the time for today. Thank you so much for watching. To see more from The Blurb, follow us on Instagram at TV2TheBlurb and TikTok at TheBlurbTV2. Spilling all the celebrity tea every Tuesday. Have a great night.